Hello, welcome back everybody. Cole with Vision Miner here. And what we have before us is the Form 4 from Form Labs. Everything you get in the box and maybe even a little bit more. So what the goal is today is I'm just gonna take it all apart and show you what you get when you purchase this beautiful machine. And I have seen it and it is beautiful. That being said, let's begin the unboxing process. Rob, you wanna help? Sure. Well, here's everything that you get when you purchase the complete package. The only things that are excluded are going to be the resin, which you know you need to buy, and this flex plate, which I can tell you from my experience is going to be a worthwhile purchase, let alone for the sake of how easy it is gonna to be to remove parts and of course the sound. And on top of that, I have never seen a more well-engineered and beautiful flex plate solution before. That's, that's impressive. Actually, everything here is incredibly impressive. The finish quality is unreal. Props to Formlabs because every single one of their products is gorgeous and easy to use. So, I mean, I suppose let's start using it and I'll show you. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the piece de resistance. The beautiful Form 4. We're gonna set this machine up. I just wanna go through some of the features that I think are really impressive on this machine. Here is what you will be investing in. Here's a great example of everything I've been talking about. Resin trays on other machines, all of they had to do was include this little top lid so that you can walk around without spilling it. Why it's taken so long for someone to come up with such a simple solution, that is very much appreciated. And as you use this machine more and more, trust me, you'll appreciate it by not spilling resin everywhere. This is pretty hands-off in terms of the resin. It keeps you clean. Plus, you know, it's toxic to an extent. Their system and the way this is enclosed and, and, and doesn't just have an open top that can sit around is also a nice way to keep vapor out of places. Makes a lot of sense. I, at first I was hesitant of the cartridge idea, and now I wish my printer had it, to be honest with you. One of the nice things is it's not one of these machines where you have to assemble every single part of it. Let me move our little flex plate. Sorry, that'll never not be fun. To replace the screen on all my machines I've used, you had to tear the thing down and carefully insert a ribbon cable. They have a special board with an HDMI cable that you just plug right in. Thank you. I mean, odds are they say, you know, a million layers before you're gonna have to really replace any, of the, any parts of the light engine. So you'll never see that, but the fact that it's there, I appreciate a lot. Let's see if I can just do this through logical deduction. Yep. That was easy. No instructions here, who needs instructions? But I recommend that you read them. Here we have our little stickers because, well, we're gonna be starting with fast model resin and uh, we're gonna actually put a sticker on this vat so that we know that this vat is for that material. I constantly go walk away from my machines at home and come back. I don't remember what resin I have in there. So I have a couple bottles just full of I think it's Soriatech blue, I don't know. That's a, another simple little solution that makes it easier to use. One thing I'm gonna recommend is to have a lot of vats on hand so that you can dedicate a vat to a material because then all you have to do is put the lid on it and set it aside. You have the sticker, you know exactly what it is. Just because you know it sits in the vat for a while doesn't mean the resin's bad. I mean, I wouldn't leave it in there for two years, but it allows you to pick right back up. You got the wipey boy plugged in. Our vat is secured. It's see, I think it would just be getting the interface running, get it connected to the internet and put that in. Dang, you, you fast. Let's get started, shall we? <laughs> We're gonna select where we live, United States. Enable camera, there's a camera too. That's so cool. Yeah, of course we want the camera, there it is. Oh, you can see me. That's hilarious. Enable analytics. We're gonna say yes, because we got nothing to hide. No analytics. Level the printer. What, it has an accelerometer in it? Are you serious? Once again, one of those little solutions that makes a lot of sense. It's level. Insert resin tank, I have. Insert mixer, that's been done. Insert build platform, that's been done. Insert resin cartridge into the cartridge slot. Here it goes. 
Man, that's a lot nicer than hand pouring. Now that we have this all set up, let's get it into the computer. Uh, I'm gonna go into the preform software and just add printer. It's gonna ask for the code on the front of the printer, which is, and put in a, that's it. That's all there is to it. So let's actually go and slice something. Add printer, friendly quail, there we go. Our old friend, the friendly quail. We have the option of 0 0.1, 0 0.16, or 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is the fastest, so let's just see what happens if we try that. Apply, and let me bring in the part. And that is going to be the torture test. Now normally, when you're printing with these machines, SLA, you do not want the part laying flat against the build volume, but this specific part, this torture test, requires that for it to work properly. So we're just gonna go to orient, select base, and click the bottom of it, and now it's in the proper orientation. I guess all we do is click print now. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I just heard the valve shut, so it knew exactly how much to add. That, that thing going back and forth, it's getting poured in the back, going down the chute, and that thing is pushing it around so it mixes. Oftentimes, with, if, if I'm adding resin that's been sitting for a while, I'm gonna have to, on my machine, I shake it, pour it in, and then like use a little mixer to hand, move it around by hand. This is not that. Part's done, but with SLA, as you probably already know, now comes the washing and curing part of the process. I'm a little hesitant because this is the part that's always an absolute nightmare. So I'm looking forward to see how they handle it. So we have our washing station set up. We are using 99% IPA. Some places don't allow, some workplaces don't allow you to use that. Get in touch with us. We can get you the form non-flammable detergent that works really well. We can bundle that with your package. But here we are using IPA. We set up the little arms for, to just to hold the bill plate. But if you just push this button, oh my gosh, I wish I had this. The thing lifts up by itself, which is cool and stops a huge mess. But besides that, there's this tiny door that lifts up. So it blocks the IPA below it until you put it, that's so cool. They did fix this because this was always the pain. Let's, let's actually begin the process. And to be clear, I meant the transferring from, you know, taking it from the printer and then washing it, getting IPA everywhere and resin. Okay. Get the last few drips off. Okay. Oh! Yeah, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I'm gonna close this. I don't like to leave my resin exposed to natural light. Um, lower. That's so cool. Ooh, that stinks. Not anymore. Start. This is fun to use. You can see all the resin coming off. That's so neat. I was, we were trying to figure out what this does and it's ingenious. This actually tell you how saturated your IPA is, or, or whatever your so cleaning solution is with resin and when to change it, instead of just eyeballing it. And man, they've really figured out everything. And with elegant, simple solutions too. This is cool. Now comes the next step. The curing. Noise. That's cool. Man, that's cool. All right. Guess you could just let it sit for a little bit, but here I'm gonna pop off the part. Almost, there we go. For the time being, I'll set that back there, wait for it to dry. Look at that, it's so tiny. That's impressive. The next step is gonna go into the curing, and this also has heat. So I'm just waiting for this thing to preheat to 60 C before it blasts it with UV. Here's how you got the part. Toss it in here. It'll heat up, blast it with UV. 
Beep and you're done. We just finished curing this part. So now we get to actually inspect what we got. Wow, that's a nice surface finish. Here, I'll put it out here. So you guys can take a look at it. That's how you print. Very easy. And there was zero slicing involved. Trust me. SLA is not what it used to be. As you saw, this workflow, this awesome set of equipment from beginning to end is very smooth, very beautiful. I'm a big fan. So thank you very much for spending time with me. Vision Miners, that company has been around since 2017, making sure everyone gets the machine they need, quality service, and their questions answered. That's one thing we take great pride in is our amount of knowledge that we have, whether it's from this to 3D scanners to SLS, FDM, the list goes on. Our goal is to make sure everyone stays happy and enjoys the process of using additive manufacturing. So thank you once again. Check out visionminer.com. Give us a call, send us an email. We're here for you.